President, I'd like to speak for a few minutes about an amendment that I've offered to the National Defense Authorization Act. The name of this amendment is the Due Process Guarantee Act. Alexander Hamilton, writing in Federalist Number 84, called arbitrary imprisonment one of the, quote, favorite and most formidable instruments of tyrants. The Constitution includes safeguards against this form of tyranny, including the right of habeas corpus and the guarantee that American citizens will not be deprived of life, liberty, or property by the government without due process of law. Our commitment to these rights is tested from time to time. It is most tested in times of crisis. We've not always passed these tests. During the Second World War, President Franklin D. Roosevelt unilaterally authorized the internment of over 100,000 Japanese Americans for fear they would spy against the United States. The government presented no evidence that these Americans posed any threat to their country because the government had no evidence. Most of the detainees were themselves native-born citizens of the United States of America. Many had never even visited Japan during their entire lives. That episode in our nation's history is sadly personal to the state I represent. The U.S. government unjustly detained thousands of Japanese Americans in Utah at the Topaz War Relocation Center. Japanese American internment is the most dramatic and shameful instance of detention in our nation's history, but it's far from the only instance. In 1950, in the climate of intense fear about communist infiltration of government, Congress enacted the McCarran Internal Security Act over the, president, uh, over the veto of President Harry Truman. That law contained an emergency provision allowing the president to detain any person he thought might spy on the United States. And more recently than that, in the post-9-11 era, there has been renewed pressure to diminish our constitutional protections in the name of security. Lawmakers from both parties have authorized the detention of Americans suspected of terrorism without charge, without trial, and without meeting the evidentiary standard required for every other crime, potentially for life. In the National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal year 2012, Congress authorized the indefinite military detention of suspected terrorists, including American citizens arrested on American soil. These episodes, Japanese American internment, the McCarran Internal Security Act, and the NDAA for 2012, are teachable moments, if you will. In all three cases, the United States faced real threats from totalitarian foes, foes hostile to our very core values and ideals as a nation. But instead of defying our foes by holding fast to our core values, we jettisoned them in a panic. Fear and secrecy won out. The Constitution and constitutional values lost. Thankfully, that isn't the whole story. For there have also been times when Americans have stood up for the Constitution in the face of threats, thus sending a strong message to the totalitarian forces arrayed against us. Arrayed against us. For instance, in 1971, Congress passed the Non-Detention Act, stating that, quote, no citizen shall be imprisoned or otherwise detained by the United States except pursuant to an act of Congress. Congress can make another stand for the Constitution by allowing a vote on the Bipartisan Due Process Guarantee Act, by correcting the mistake it, in the, uh, the, the very same mistake that it made in the NDAA for fiscal year 2012 and protecting Americans from indefinite detention by government. What you might ask is the Due Process Guarantee Act. Well, in short, the amendment would raise the bar that the government has to clear in order to indefinitely detain American citizens and lawful permanent residents who are apprehended on U.S. soil. It would forbid the government from justifying such detentions using general authorizations for the use of military force, such as the 2001 AUMF against the 9-11 plotters. Instead, the government would have to obtain explicit written approval from Congress before taking such action with regard to Americans 
uh, if they are detained uh, within the United States. The Due Process Guarantee Act is based on a simple premise. If the government wants to take the extraordinary step of apprehending Americans on U.S. soil without charge or trial, it has to get extraordinary permission and should, at a bare minimum, require an express act of Congress authorizing such extraordinary action. And if my colleagues want to grant the government this power over their constituents, they should authorize it themselves. They shouldn't hide behind vague authorizations so the voting public doesn't know what they're doing. Now, this begs the question we whether we would ever want to do this, whether we should ever do it. A and it's difficult for many of us to imagine any circumstance in which anyone would want to authorize such extraordinary action. But that is exactly the point, and the point contemplated by the suspension clause of the U.S. Constitution. And if something like that's going to be done, Congress needs to do it and needs to do it expressly and identify what exactly uh, the, the, the threat, the, the war, the insurrection it is that's being addressed. I'm offering this amendment because of my faith in our law enforcement officers and judges. Uh, and uh, I have great faith in those people who fill those roles in our country who have successfully apprehended and prosecuted many homegrown terrorists. Their example to us proves that our security is not dependent on a supercharged government and a weakened Constitution. We must remember, moreover, Mr. President, that our security and our privacy are not necessarily at odds with each other. Indeed, our privacy is part of our security. It's part of what makes us secure. We can secure that homeland without using the formidable instruments of tyrants. It is with this objective in mind that I propose to my colleagues and request the support of my colleagues for the Due Process Guarantee Act, which should be adopted so as to make sure that we are both free and safe while remaining secure. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the floor and note the absence of quorum. Clerk will call the roll.